Hey guys, we're gonna do one last revisit of the uh, Evinrude Sport Twin 1956 that came from a yard sale about three weeks a month ago. Uh, on that, we got a couple of videos already on a playlist on the channel if you want the backstory on it, but I'll give it a quickie. The we got it running, and uh, it said that it was overheating or not pumping water when the person was last using it. We brought it home, I think, cleaned carb on it. And do we even clean the carpet? I don't remember. Anyway, so we looked in, got it running, and with that found that it did not circulate any water through it, but it seemed like it ran okay. The gears were good. Opened it up, found the impeller was kind of, uh, it's actually right here. The old impeller was stripped out. You can see where it was galled. And it's driven by a pin. Now, the pin seemed to run on the lower part of the plate just kind of rub on this plate you can see this the scribe mark where that's been spinning around so that sat like that well the very first thing that we found was the id of this hole was much bigger than the shaft that it was on so the, the impeller was actually kind of just flapping around in there so this is the wrong one for the wrong year so i looked into the bottom end to go see what the issue was uh see if the shaft was just um something was allowing the dry shaft it goes down to the lower unit to drive down too far. So I thought something didn't seem right. Opened it up, um, and when we opened it up, found a little bit of water in the lower unit. So that prompted me to order the seal kit. We did all that, and uh, that was on the last video. So moving fast forward, still more comments are coming back and forth saying that the pin should not be riding on the plate, that there is a circlip or a C-clip on the bottom of the drive shaft that where it meets the bottom gear that holds the shaft up a little bit so the pin does not ride on the plate. If you pull the pin out, the, the shaft actually dropped down where you can't even see the seat anymore. Anyway, so moving fast forward, what I had found on it was 56 did not run it, 57 up did, but there, I keep getting uh, conflicting uh, comments on that back and forth. So, uh, and I do appreciate everybody who's kind of jumped in and said, no, that's not right, etc. Uh, for the fact that it's got six screws and uh, seven screws and the propeller to come off for us to go back in there and look again and some fluid, it would be worthwhile. Again, what I found is 56 didn't use it and then 57 up did. Uh, but it seems like looking back at the old videos, there's an area for a clip to go in there. So I think we're gonna go take it apart. We'll do some investigating. If we can get a clip in there, it'll make me rest easier knowing that it's not going to be an issue in the future and so on. So with that, let me get set up with the camera, let's get the fluid out of it, and we'll pop it back apart one more time. So I let this thing sit in the barrel uh, probably about two or three days submerged, and it also ran in the barrel for about 20 minutes or so. So if we should just get nothing but straight oil, but if we see water, then we know I have an issue with the seal kit that I, that I put in, but let's go find out. We have to pull the top one out to get it to flow. So far, it looks good. So I think our seal held up quite well. I don't have an issue with any of that. Let that drain a few minutes. It's a little bit of water coming off of the uh, off of up here, from where it's kind of dripped out of the exhaust. Nothing came out of that. I guess the oil looked nice and clean. Let's, um... Man, I tightened those better than I thought I did. Crack them loose first. No water whatsoever in the oil. That's good. Of course, when I flipped it up, it drained some water out. And the gas came out of the carburetor when it went up on end. Fast forward with the try to fast forward with the drill. Back in we go. That's a pop. There 
right. So let's get that fork up out of the way. I might have to open it up to actually can we go with there we go we'll put it in reverse to give us maybe enough room to get the assembly out of the way so in its natural resting state is going to be what we're talking about is this shaft sitting too far down on this gear and there should be a recess in here on this gear that just allows like right now the pin is touched the only thing that's holding the shaft in place is where the pin is on the water pump pull the pin out you probably pull the shaft right out completely out of the bottom too i'm not sure of that but so we're going to want to pull this gear out of here if we can and see if we can have an area for a snap ring up inside there or a cert clip or whatnot. But hopefully this can go up. I should have pushed that first. That's the distance it could travel in the water pump. Let's make sure that, that guy has enough room. I would say it feels like it's going to go the other way, where it's not going to be in the center. Get a little poker. Let's get a little poker. And some old man glasses. Let's take a look. See if there's enough room between that. not sure because the other thing you don't want to do is go the other direction you know you don't want it so that the pins jammed up against the top of the housing so it looks like we can get something in there I'm gonna go clean this up and we're gonna go look inside there and see if uh, we can get maybe a snap ring I think the one that probably was in there, I didn't get a good picture of it, it was more like the, um, it looks like a piece of round spring cut, and it's a C-clip looking thing, but not sure of that neither. So what I have is this handy dandy little kit I dug out of my, uh, my hardware collection, and these are pretty much, I think going to be our wrong side this is like an external one that goes it grabs around not one that pushes from the inside going out so i'm going to run to the hardware store and see if we could find i would prefer the one you use with like a, a snap ring plier which is this style that style but the the two tits are not on the outside they're on the inside there so let me go see what i could find and also if they actually have the actual little metal ring style What's got me is the groove that's on the inside of this. The groove that's on the inside. I'm not sure if the light's going to work for us here. That groove is square on the inside. And if it had like, you know, the one that looks like a metal spring, round, extruded metal spring, you would think that that groove would also be round for it to fit in correctly. What I'm thinking of is possibly maybe the shaft that that comes through here is has a taper on the edges and when it it rests against it when it's up through there it helps keep that ring supported outward i would just be afraid of that falling out and going down into the gear drive down below but uh, there is an area for like a reservoir for that so if i can find something that fits in there fairly tight uh we're gonna go with it all right, so I went to the hardware store and uh, I couldn't find much for internal clips, but I did find these. I was looking for the other one again. It looks like essentially just a piece of, it looks like that, but it's a piece of wire instead of being flat on the edges. So the only concern I have now is you see how the two 
uh, nipples that you would put the snap ring pliers on to remove it with kind of protrude into the center. The shaft, this is over exaggerated, but the shaft has a taper on it. So if that's going to come up, I'm going to get this, if that's going to come up and rest against the wall. I'm just worried about the fact that um, the only contact place is going to be right there and right there and not be touching the rest of the ring. So I'm going to take a look at that. Worst case, I may come back with a little grinder. I may actually just kind of uh, grind them down so that it makes contact all the way around. You know, so make contact on this spot instead of just right there and right there. And I grabbed the spares in case I take one and uh, destroy it or ping it across the room. So let's go put that together and see what it looks like and make a judgment call from there. And I know this is in your way a little bit. But like, can you see the end of the shaft I'm talking about right there? How they have kind of a, a taper to them? So let's see if that's going to affect anything. Started on this point. There we go. Um, actually, it looks pretty good, huh? It looks like we're almost touching right there. Now I should have some, hopefully, a little bit of float room. I should be able to push that up a right hair. Eh. See, that's what I don't like. I don't know if I am now going to be preloading that the other direction. And that's what I was kind of questioning this whole time. Which way should I go? If that had a couple of foul play in it, I'd be happy with it, but, you know, it's, that's the room you got between the top and the bottom throw. That's between the top and the bottom of the impeller, the gap that's on the impeller. Hmm. You guys following me on that? If that was in the middle, I'd be happy with it. I'd say, okay, we got so much room. Only oh, other thing I'm trying to wonder is possibly if it was that round metal ring, would this be able to kind of come down just a little further and allow it to allow it to uh, fit? The, the taper would kind of lock the two of them together. I'm not sure. I'm going to take something like a, a one thou feeler gauge and put it behind it and make sure I, I have full contact that there's no gap behind, behind there and, and kind of go from there, I think. Let's see if I can get behind that. Now I should, hopefully should not be able to pull that out. Hi. I'm not crazy about it. Okay, so what I wanted to try to go do is I actually made my own clip that I was talking about earlier, which is going to be the round type material. So I actually used a spring, which is probably the same material it's made out of. It's got that same wanting to hold to the outside walls, and you can kind of see I have that fit inside that groove. So I'm going to go try it again and see, like we talked about with this taper. If with this taper, it's allowed to kind of drop down just a little further, so there's a little bit of play on this, and we'll see how that does. All right, going back in one more time. At least one more time. All right. So, I don't know if... It does seem to have dropped into that gap some. Problem is the shaft's probably all the way up. If I can get just a little, little play. If I had the other end off, well actually if I had the other end off it wouldn't make a difference because that all had, has to be together up there anyway. If the shaft is down, but as soon as I got to push this on there it's going to want to push up.
I'm going to say that's probably our best bet. I think we're going to go with that as the solution. I think that is probably going to allow us a little bit of play. I think I can see play still in it. Yeah, I can. It's not ideal. Uh, again, I was hoping for when all that was put back together that that we would have whatever we would split the difference between what was there that we that we would have you know say if the whole gap is we'll call it a quarter of an inch that we would have an eighth inch of uh, push up and that mean that the pin on the impeller was sitting dead center and uh, now it's, it seems like it's gonna be riding on that top actually you know the other thing that could be happening I wonder if this the shaft is running into the is, is just topping out on the um, that might be an issue right there I wonder if the shaft is just touching where it goes into on the power head and it's not the pin. That could be that could be part of it too. Yeah, I think we're on to something. I bet you I don't know. I'm gonna measure that and then I'm gonna measure the width of that impeller. I shove that right in the hole. Be nice if all that lines up for us. We can just do it directly. Like that. Yeah, so that's what's happening. So I would say the pin. Whoop, I almost lost it. Need a pointer. So I would say the pin is no longer riding here. It's riding right here. But it's being it's just the shaft is topping out on the other end. So we are in the middle. I'm happy about that. I think we have a little bit of play now so that when this gets thrust into the upward position, it's not pushing on that ring. Uh, actually, if it's, that, that's, I just wish the, the shaft had a little bit more play to float, but it's going to be what it is. It seems like it has a little. We're going to go with that and uh, live happily ever after. Worst case scenario, I think what would happen is it would push the ring out, which I don't think is going to happen, and uh, probably sit in the bottom of this, this transom. We're going with that. <laughs> it gets better. All right, so I tapped on it. Look at the gap that it's got now. I actually tapped on the shaft and, drew, and see if it would drive itself further up, and it did. So. I think. I might go back, what do you think, go with that clip or the uh, snap ring? I'm going to go with the snap ring just for the fact that it's going to be a lot less for it to go and push out of that gap. Again, we're just here wrenching in the garage trying to figure stuff out. It's not definitely not a how-to, but uh, we're all getting an education how this stuff works, I guess. Alright, the other clip's back in there again, and we should be able to... There it goes. That's more like it. And then now it's got a good 3 16 gap that the pin is topping out on. I feel much better about that. I was afraid that that shaft couldn't float in there and was going to cause us issues. I took the C clip, the E clip, I guess you call it. And uh, so it looks like that. I took it and I kind of stretched it out a little bit too so that the spring load is really tight to the walls. I think we are going to be just fine. So I'm going to go clean all this back up, get ready to reseal it, put everything back in it, and uh, I'm probably not going to run it because I already put the water jug away and did some stuff. But the uh, 47, uh, 49, one and a half horse that we were playing with is uh, waiting on some parts too. So maybe we'll take it back out and run it one more time. Maybe not on that. Everything we know is good up in there. Again, it was just whether we were resting on that pin on the pump or we rest on the clip. So I just want to thank the guys that uh, kept mentioning uh, a bunch of issues with that as far as uh, going back in. I think it kind of would have survived either way, but I feel more confident that it's put together this way than the other way. So with that. So I said we fill her up one last time and we should be good. Again, I want to thank the guys that uh, made the comments you know, for and against uh, 
having it one in there. And again, it's the whole reason why I took it apart was because I felt something was wrong that it riding on a pin. It just seemed kind of weird to me too that that would be the the setup on it, you know, but and then you go on the internet and the internet tells you, you know, ten different answers to your question. And it makes it so you're not sure the for what the fix is and uh, I feel pretty confident this time watch watch this video make more questions <laughs> watch this even throw the comments even more uh, all over the place whether should or shouldn't should have used this you should have used that but we're gonna go with this uh, I don't foresee it being an issue the pump should be changed every fairly frequently anyway the impeller so the next time it comes apart if uh, they find that it the pin is touching on the bottom you know that clip fell apart and uh, if not, if it's still riding in the middle, then uh, it should be fine. But again, I'm not suspecting anything. So with that, guys, I think uh, I'm all done with this video. And uh, with that, signing off.